Okay, so chances are most of you by now have seen or heard Chris Mellon on the Joe Rogan experience. Um, there was one part, one very specific part that I want to address because I'm sorry, but Chris Mellon is wrong. It may be because he just is not informed and he's presenting the facts as he knows them. It may be because being interviewed by Joe Rogan is something that Chris Mellon is, is not used to. Um, it may be that he's pushing a narrative. I don't know. I'm not claiming any of those things are true. All I am saying is that he's wrong. So let's take a listen really quick. So we should be able to gain some insights. It's entirely possible that they are drones. Um, Tyler Rogaway is a, a brilliant analyst um, of, of aviation issues who works for the war zone. He's written a very lengthy piece making that uh, true. Uh, making that assertion. Um, could be right. I'm, uh, I'm a little skeptical. Um, but we'll see. That's, that's why we need more data. Well, we the duration of, the, of flight was far longer than drones routinely can what can was the duration perform. hours so typically um if it's a, an electric drone it has a very short uh, flight time these things these these ships were 100 miles off the coast all right so in that audio clip christopher mellon so is attempting we should whoops, be. is attempting to put forth the idea that drones are not capable of extended flight times. If if you're talking about the ones that you can get from Target or Walmart, sure, 45 minutes is pushing it. You're probably about 15 minutes or a half hour. I mean, I've got cheap little toy drones that I get about eight minutes of flight time out of. Um, but whatever is buzzing, the USS Nimitz, the Russell, our strike groups, our aircraft carriers and our deployed military assets, I highly doubt that these are commercial off-the-shelf drones. He himself says that these things were 100 miles offshore. So let's just take some of the things right off, right off the bat. I mean, I've got stuff in my head that I know for a fact is capable of a whole lot more than just a few hours of flight time. The the Zephyr Stratospheric UAV, also known as HAPS, this uh, uh, high-altitude pseudo-satellite, uh, this thing can hover for more than 25 days. 25 days! And that was proven on its maiden flight. It has a 33-meter wingspan, and it only weighs 140 kilograms. Um then we've got the the, uh, the the Global Observer Stratospheric Persistent UAS, Unmanned Aerial System. Um, this thing is equipped with hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, it can, it can uh, loiter in the air for over 170 hours at 65,000 feet and cover more than 280,000 square miles while carrying a payload of 400 pounds. Um, we've got the Orion UAS. This thing can carry payloads of over 2,600 pounds. It's fitted with two AE399 or AE300, I don't remember, I think it's AE300, heavy fuel engines, uh, giving it about a 25,000 kilometer range at 30,000 feet with an endurance of five days of flight time. Five days of flight time. Uh, we've got the, uh, the United 40 Smart Eye 2 UAV. Uh, this is a medium altitude, long endurance, uh, acronyms is MALE, M-A-L-E, medium altitude, long endurance UAV. Uh, it's developed by ADCOM Systems. It's been around since around 2011, and it can stay aloft for over 120 hours. Uh, and that's while carrying a payload of 1,000 kilograms flying at 23,000 feet. Uh, then, then another one is the Heron, H-E-R-O-N. Uh, it's a medium altitude, long endurance, another male 
uh, UAS. Uh, it this one this one's unique because it's operated by more than twenty customers uh, for intelligence, surveillance, uh, maritime patrol, and, uh, and and other tactical missions. Uh, this thing carries multiple sensor payloads uh, for ELINT and SIGINT and, and all sorts of things. It also uh, maintains a, a, line, a, a direct link for uh, SATCOM communications uh, and to be able to control uh, talk to ground control stations beyond line of sight through satellite links. Uh, this thing carries uh, payloads of 400 pounds and can fly for over 45 hours, 45 hours at 30,000 feet. So, Christopher Mellon, I'm sorry, but the assumption that drones can't routinely stay aloft for hours at a time, that may have been true back in 2000, but this is 21 years later. And we have significantly advanced drone technology. Now, these are friendly drones that I've been referencing. But to assume that China or Iran or another state actor does not have similar technology is simply ignoring, ignoring how technology advances. So, Mr. Mellon, I would, I would highly encourage you to read up and study on what other nation states have access to in the form of UAS, UAV technology, because drones can, have, do, and will fly for hours upon hours, days upon days, and sometimes weeks without coming down. Thank you.